Konnichiwa, my fellow viewers, and welcome back to the King Kong Review Series. Hello, Kitty. What else is there to say? We all know this lovable, puffy, white kitten of adorableness is one of Japan's earliest icons in the pop culture. Created by Yuko Shimizu in 1974, this character has captured the hearts of everyone around the world. Even if you don't know the lore of Hello Kitty, you've probably seen her merchandising empire everywhere from teacups, bath towels, alarm clocks, and even frickin' motor oil. And in one of her many anime incarnations, they had to do a Kong parody. So, much like the chipmunks go to the movies Kong and George Shrink's King Kongo, let's see what the cat has to hairball up this time with an episode from Hello Kitty's furry tale theater simply known as Kitty and the Kong. So the episode opens with the theater scene in New York? Oh, thank Kong, this is gonna be quicker than I thought. Nah, instead we open with the ship at sea. God, I wish. As we are introduced to our group of adorable critters and this kitten cunt who owns the damn boat. She owned the ship and everything on it. She owns the ship and everyone on it? Oh my god, it's the Steven Spiel per Hollow Kitty Cost movie! Abandoned ship! <laughs> Anyways, the crew prep their umbrellas for an incoming storm. When did this go from Kitty Kong to Kitty Creation? Not to mention, this movie is giving me flashbacks to Bangler King Kong and the acting abilities of Pointless Pictures Skull Island! Come on guys, I said I had algae! So the ship runs aground on a dog-shaped primitive island as the captain and Kitty Denim over here make playful banter. Where does it say in the tour brochure that my ship stops at a scary dog-shaped primitive island? The penguin shivered at the sight of the predator, knowing his course to the mating grounds has been miscalculated. I mean, for fuck's sakes, he's a penguin piloting a boat. Why am I even narrating this shit? I'm Morgan goddamn Freeman. Every time I narrate something, another freckle grows on my ass. I sure hope there's some friendly natives we can buy some supplies from. Friendly natives? So they go ashore to Carolot Island as they come across some poodle natives, which I gotta be honest, is a nice touch of tribute to the natives in the original. Kong, Kong, Kong? I wonder what it all means. It's our lucky day. There's plenty of food here. Smells like a Korean buffet. But in a nice turn of change, the natives set up a trap on par with the Ewoks of Return of the Jedi as the great god of the island stomps into the scene. Or the alien dog fuck child of Danny DeVito's character in Space Jam wearing Chewbacca skin as a pimp jacket. Seriously, a dog is King Kong? I mean, I've heard of those Kong dog chew toys, but if that's the joke they were going for, that's stretching it. <laughs> so looking less like King Kong and more of a Tom and Jerry cartoon, Kong goes from shitty pussy to hello pussy as he makes haste towards the jungle. Make some big bucks off that big mutt. We'll take him to New York. I'll put him on Broadway. Well, you better give him a good dog show because the critics are not going to be so kind to it. That's a low blow, Jack. So Kong swings through the jungle. Wrong jungle story, guys. As Kong flies off Fred Flintstone style onto Figment the Dragon? Uh oh, I think you made him mad. That's nothing. You should see what he's doing to the Geek Vision crew next door. Hi, Figment! <laughs> Voters say... <laughs> Violet sells, kitty! It kinda suck. So instead of ripping Barney's jaws apart, kitty has a more medicated idea. I'll give you indigestion. You'll like this much better. 
Oh, finally, I get to play this. When you get nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, Pepto Max. When you need big relief, you need Pepto Max. With twice the strength, Pepto Max is maximum pink. So the crew follow behind as Kitty does this with Kong. Right claw, left claw, dip and glide along. That's how we do the Kong. Take it away, big guy. You're looking oh. good. Oh. My God, that's as cringy as this. This card for sale. Very cheap. Very good. I always hate that for movie. Sale. Very cheap. So after that pleasant sight, Kitty gets away with the crew as they head back to the wall. Anchor hoisted, Captain! Lower the anchor! After all, it's my anchor. You'll always question why the hell this bitch has a captain to begin with if she's just gonna be giving orders on the damn ship in the first place! Look at me. I'm the captain now. I mean, it's either that nonsense or... Go back, hello, Kitty! John, you take this one, man. <laughs> what the fuck? No! So they trap Kong into the ship's cargo bay. Man, a rubber band? Wish Englehorn thought of that one. It's over! You got that lunatic! And take him to Manhattan to present in the ultimate dog show. Oh, poor Kong! He's terrified! I've got to talk to Catnip. Please, Catnip, you've got to stop! He's getting out of control! Forget! Wait, I feel like I've seen this before. When did this air again? Did Peter Jackson just rip off a Hello Kitty cartoon during pre-production in 1996? This was a design that we did in 1996 that we pretty much kept intact because, of course, when we were doing Kong first time round in 96, Jurassic Park was very, very fresh in people's minds and we wanted to do raptors, but we wanted to make them look very different to the, you know, the, the right. great creatures that Stan Winston had designed for Jurassic Park. Well, the 1996 draft took from a bunch of other movies, so why not throw some anime in there as well? Pathetic. This is a real disappointment. So in a fit of rage, Kong breaks his leash, grabs Kitty, and runs amok in the streets. <laughs> or rips off another Spielberg dinosaur movie, but hey, whatever fills the runtime. Did all of Hollywood just see this cartoon and decide this is where true storytelling needs to go? As Catnip goes Grand Theft Auto after Kong. Kong approaching Empire Signaling! You're not Biff Tannen! I mean, for God's sakes, you're gonna go to jail when the police find out! I own the police! So Kong, of course, climbs the Empire State Building with Kitty in his hands. And you all know where this is going. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the- Hello, Kitty! <laughs> Fuck it. Shit balls. So Kong flies home to the audience's confusion, and the cartoon ends with the crew giving a final bow. Alive on Broadway, this is not. So, how does Hello Kitty bring to life the classic tale? Well, if anything, it's cute, but cringy. Yeah, I know it's for kids, but as a spoof to the King Kong story, it feels really watered down and kind of dumb, honestly. It's even not one of the better parodies I've seen. It doesn't help that the Hello Kitty Furry Tale Theater didn't last longer than a single season back in 1987, and you can see why. The whole series as a whole is really only parodies of classic movies. In fact, the same thing actually occurred with the original Alvin and the Chipmunks series. Their final season, The Chipmunks Go to the Movies, spoofed many films like Batman, Back to the Future, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It just shows that once you do a full season of movie parodies, you basically run out of ideas. Hey, here's another great thing. We're gonna do movie parody. But in Hello Kitty's case, it's actually the first animated series based on this beloved cat. The series was a Japanese-Canadian co-production produced by Deke Entertainment, who would later produce the first English dub of Sailor Moon among producing many other iconic characters of the 80s and 90s. Hell, even Sailor Moon couldn't escape Kong's grasp. In the season one episode Kitty Chaos, a cat becomes possessed by the Negaverse and captures Luna in a very Kong-like fashion. I know it's a bit of a pit stop to mention this, 
But hey, when am I ever going to talk about Sailor Moon and King Kong in the same sentence? But back to Hello Kitty. The series also was the first major start for several voice actors, including the legendary Tara Strong as Hello Kitty herself, along with other actors like Chris Summers of Rugrats and Inspector Gadget fame, Carl Banes, who also provided the voice of Professor Bond in the original King Kong Rankin Bass cartoon, and Fred Savage? Well, it wouldn't be the first time Fred's had to deal with King Kong. In fact, he had prior work with the giant ape a year before. Some of the other films the series paid homage to were the likes of The Wizard of Oz, Star Wars, E.T., Jaws, even the Universal Monsters got their take by this adorable kitten, with music even composed by Chaim Saban? Oh boy, I can't wait for them to do a dark brooding adaptation of this Japanese classic. It'll be two hours of origins with only 20 minutes of Hello Kitty. Don't worry, I have plans for that, guys. Kitty and the Kong aired as the second act along with a Sleeping Beauty spoof on October 24th, 1987. While the series took a while to be released properly, it got a few DVD releases in 2003, and the King Kong episode was released as part of the Kitty Goes to the Movies DVD and are widely available on Amazon for cheap prices. But overall, Kitty and the Kong is a cute but pointless adaptation to the King Kong tale. While some of the characters are annoying and stupid, it's something more on par for toddlers to watch, and with that gets a small rating of a 3 out of 10. It's for kids and has its adorable moments, but while not being the biggest fan of Hello Kitty, even though I see nothing wrong with it as a whole, I'm gonna have to say skip this one if you're a Kong fan. But if you're a Hello Kitty fan, it might be more up your alley. Well, I guess I'm just scraping the bottom of the kitty litter at this point, so I guess I should take some time to let more King Kong material roll out before doing the next video. But stay tuned, my fellow subscribers, as we celebrate the 100th episode of the Big Jack Film Reviews. And let's just hope to God it's not another anime adaptation, because Lord knows there's only so much of that I can take in one sitting. <laughs> Even more after the kitty players have the say. So call up the 